April 24th, the day Armenians around the world remember the year 1915, when thousands of their ancestors perished during what's widely known as the Armenian Genocide. I'm neither a historian nor an international law expert, and yet I feel obliged to give you a sense of my own personal journey through the vast and complex landscape of Armenian-Turkish relations. I'm a 54-year-old Turkish-American woman. I've lived in the Boston area for over 30 years, first as a college and graduate school student, later as a television producer, and most recently as a mid-career student of international affairs and minority rights. I must admit that it wasn't until I was in my late 40s that I ever had an actual conversation with an Armenian person about his or her personal and national history let alone the Armenian Genocide. Why? The answer explains why I'm compelled to write about my own personal journey and about my relationship to two murders a quarter of a century apart. On May 4, 1982, I learned that a man I knew personally had been shot to death on his way home from work. That kind and gentle man was Orhan Gündüz, Turkey's honorary consul to Boston at the time. I had stopped by his little souvenir shop in Cambridge, Massachusetts for a quick hello, as it happened, just a few hours before he died. I still remember walking to the entrance to that MIT building for one of my folk dancing rehearsals and being told it was canceled because Orhan Bey was killed. I also remember trying to console his wife and saying some words of condolence at his funeral. But what I remember most is how Gündüz's murder, claimed by a group named Justice Commandos Against Armenian Genocide, shocked me so much that I spent the next 25 years avoiding the subject altogether. During those early 80s, a few of the area's Turkish influentials sent me lengthy packages of propaganda to submit to my employer at the time, WCVB-TV. The aim was to make sure that nothing outside the official Turkish narrative, which referred to the events of 1915 as the so-called genocide, would be exposed to Western media. This was also the time when the program I worked on, the news magazine Chronicle, was producing stories about the richness of Boston's ethnic makeup. But there was no profile on the relatively small Turkish community then, and when it was time to air the Chronicle program on Armenians, I skipped work, the first and last time ever in my life. I simply wasn't ready to hear the G word repeated over the airwaves, and I knew it most certainly would be. That infamous, scary, to be avoided at all costs word, genocide. The reasoning was quite simple if you happen to be raised in Turkey. Like most other Turkish people of my generation, my knowledge about Armenians was limited to what I had studied in history classes. Armenians had sided with the enemy during the waning days of the Ottoman Empire, and for that they were forever marked as traitors for Turkey and the Turks. For two decades following the Gündüz assassination, I shunned the subject of the Armenian Genocide because it was too uncomfortable, too painful, and too difficult to deal with. In fact, when I attended a mid-career master's degree program at the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy, I wrote my thesis on the rights of Turkey's Kurds, bypassing the subject of the Armenians altogether. During those 20 years, I raised two children, instilling in them my own values of equal rights and social justice, but with one exception. I did not speak about the Armenians, or the reason that I had stopped going into Watertown, Massachusetts, with its largely Armenian population, after the murder of Orhan Gündüz, who my children had never met. Then came the summer of 2006, when I received an invitation to work in an Armenian-Turkish dialogue project. Soon after I had started to immerse myself in the history of the Ottoman Armenians, a history that had gone missing from all the school textbooks I had read as a child, I heard the news of an assassination. Hrant Tink, a Turkish-Armenian newspaper editor, was gunned down in front of his office in Istanbul by a 16-year-old Turkish nationalist. 
I did not know much about Dink at the time. I knew only that he was the founder of Agos, the first community newspaper in Turkey printed in both Armenian and Turkish. That he had opened the eyes of his traditionally quiet and passive Armenian community, encouraging both Armenians and Turks to speak openly about their ethnic identities and their family histories. That countless people in Turkey had discovered their lost Armenian ancestry through his help and support. But I didn't know all of this that fateful morning when I turned on the morning news. When I heard Ding had been killed, there was only one thing I knew with absolute certainty. Something despicable had happened, and it was unacceptable. The date was January 19, 2007, 25 years after I had suppressed the subject of the Armenian Genocide. For the next five years, I followed a long and winding road of learning, reading, and thinking, of hearing from a variety of people, locally and internationally, in person, over the airwaves, and on the internet. I attended workshops, participated in events, watched countless videos and films on the subject of the Armenian Genocide and its aftermath. Most of all, I made friends with Armenian Americans, with whom I'd been living parallel lives while never exchanging a word. As I became acquainted with the names of former Armenian villages and understood why every Armenian I met would mention the name of a village I knew only by its Turkish name, I was saddened and enraged by the lack of information and by the taboo-promoting silence I had experienced growing up in Turkey. There's a deep well dug up. They pushed us all in there. Whether the realization comes after a quarter of a century, as it did for me, or overnight with luck and soul searching, I believe that all Turkish people need to know and accept one simple truth. Somewhere, somehow, an ancestor of theirs may have taken the life of an innocent Armenian person just because that person was Armenian, period. When that is understood, digested, accepted, and inscribed in the hearts and minds of every Turkish person, then and only then, can we start a new chapter? And in that chapter, the discussion will no longer be an argument about the term genocide, the definition of intent, or the total tally of killings on either side. It will simply be a discussion about the question we want to leave for our children to ponder. How do we deal with the other? Orhan Gündüz was killed because he was a Turkish diplomat and he represented the misguided silence on an issue that affected millions of the world's Armenians. Hrant Dink was killed because he was an Armenian from Turkey who spoke up and promoted the opposite of silence on the same issue. As a human being who abhors the notion of stereotyping, humiliating, attacking, targeting, or killing because of anyone's ethnicity, I cried the same kind of tears over those two murders. But here's where those two heinous acts diverge in my heart and soul. While the first murder led me to years of silence and ignorance, the second led me to truth-seeking and knowledge. Only time will tell whether Ding's legacy will indeed transform the country of his birth and death. We have lived together on this land for a very long time and therefore we possess a common memory. And yet we have transformed this common memory into a string of one-note memories. We are speaking to our own choirs. Isn't it time we change these monologues into a dialogue so that we can work on reconstructing our common memory? I think a lot about those two politically charged murders, Gündüz's and Ding's, bookends of sorts in my re-education journey. And I know I cannot go on denying the true depth of brutality and suffering brought upon the Ottoman Armenians and the animosity and hatred 1915 perpetuated for nearly a century. On a more personal level, such a denial would be an affront to all of my new friends and acquaintances, not only because they happen to be Armenian, but because they are first and foremost human beings who I care about.